Rev up your engines. Today I'm going to talk about why not to buy a variable compression ratio engine. And to understand why I say that, there's a little history lesson. Displacement on demand engines to get power when you want power and better gas mileage when you want better gas mileage have been around for a while. In 1981, Cadillac made the first production engine that was called the L62 V864. It could run as a V8 for full power, then turn to six cylinders and even four cylinders, but alas, it was a massive failure and the engines tended to fall apart after a short period of driving. And as time went on, electronics got better. In 2005, GM tried it again with a 5.3 liter V8 LS4 engine where half the cylinders could be shut down when you had low power demands. Really the cylinder deactivation systems, they're pretty much a massive failure, but now they're making variable compression engines that have varying compression ratios inside. Now in itself this isn't a new idea. They've been around for a long time. They were test engines. They weren't engines that they put in cars and people drove around. And yes, it's very interesting technology, but as for myself, I don't want to be a guinea pig, spend a bunch of money for some engine that they're just trying out and find out that who they blow up after a certain period of time or they have significant driving problems. Who knows? The first production variable compression engine is the Infiniti QX50. It's a 2.0 turbocharged four cylinder engine that can change its compression ratio from 8 to 1 all the way up to 14 to 1. As you can see in this animation, instead of having a piston and a rod that goes right to the crank, it has various different angles which can adjust how much compression is in the engine. All these moving parts are just things that are going to break down over time. I mean, let's look at logically. You have a piston and a piston rod and a normal engine, this bolts to the crank and it goes up and down and up and down and up and down. Simple designs, been around for hundred something years, reliable. I mean, really, do you want to replace a simple system as a piston and a rod to one that has a piston, a rod, then other rods, cantilever system, another rod, and then a computer controlled servo that adjusts how high and low it goes. Now yes, the variable compression engine that Infiniti has out does get better gas mileage. It's 27% better than the old 2 liter non variable compression engine. And it certainly beats the heck out of GM cylinder deactivation which only got 5 to 7% better gas mileage. But really when you got an old system that's totally dependable, if you want to make radical changes, I think they should go radical changes for completely different types of engines, not four stroke gasoline engines or even two stroke gasoline engines. If you're going to use that much technology, you might as well give up with gasoline engines and do something else. Rather than modify gasoline engines with all these crazy designs where computers control the lift of the pistons and hey, you know that stuff's going to break, it always does. Look at Nissan, they have a history of problems. The company almost went bankrupt. And since since Renault and Nissan merged, hey, their quality's gone. So it's kind of fascinating that that's the company that's bringing out the first variable compression engine to sell to the public. I'm not against technology, but I like my technology to actually work. Personally, I'd wait a while till those things have been out and tested. Toyota starts making them and they start selling them by the millions and then over the years they're proven to be reliable engines. Yeah, I'll buy one then. But since I'm not a fortune teller, hey, I'm staying away from these variable compression ratio engines until they prove their worth. And really, what are you getting for all this technology? The Infiniti, hey, its combined economy is only 26 miles a gallon. That isn't that great gas mileage when you think about it. And that's the rated gas mileage. Everybody knows you always get worse gas mileage than what the ratings give you. So really, uh, I'll give a pass on these variable compression ratio engines till things change. And maybe they will, but I'm not betting my bank on it. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell.